good morning. So I would like to present to you my progress so far. Uh, the topic of my PhD is the investigation of the efficacy of platelet-rich plasma treatment in chronic dermatological disorders. I'm Fanny Mesnerich and I'm a PhD student at the Department of Dermatology, Venerology and Dermatology of St. Mary's University. My vision is that patients with chronic dermatological disorders could have a better quality of life and I would like to achieve that by finding new topical therapeutic options for these uh, dermatological disorders. Here you can see my specific goals, investigating the therapeutic effects of platelet-rich plasma in alopecia area of the scalp and also in the management of chronic wounds. And I have an additional third project, uh, the investigation of the utility of multi-biomarker disease activity score for the monitoring of rheumatoid arthritis. So my, my first project, platelet-rich plasma in the treatment of alopecia areata. Alopecia areata is an autoimmune condition where you can see inflammation induced, usually patchy hair loss. It can affect the scalp, the beard, or even the whole body, leading to a serious deterioration in patient's quality of life. The lifetime incidence risk of alopecia areata is estimated at 2.1%. And regarding the treatment options, uh, there are some problems with this treatment modality, given it's a corticosteroid. One of them is uh, adverse effects, and the other one is steroid phobia. So platelet-rich plasma uh, can be a great alternative when one of these problems occur. Um, it contains concentrated growth factors and cytokines, which can promote hair regrowth. So it is already used in the treatment of androgenic alopecia, which is a different subtype of alopecia with different pathomechanism. Our aim was to evaluate the effects of platelet-rich plasma on hair regrowth in alopecia areata. So the clinical question was, does platelet-rich plasma increase hair regrowth in alopecia areata compared to triamcinolacetone in the first line of treatment? Uh, the population was patients diagnosed with alopecia areata of the scalp. The intervention was platelet-rich plasma treatment. The comparator was triamcinolacetonide, and the outcome was hair regrowth, estimated with the help of the SALT score, which is severity of alopecia 2 score. SALT score shows us the percentage of hair loss affecting the scalp. So uh, the higher the decrease in SALT score is, the greater the improvement. So our hypothesis was that platelet-rich plasma is as good as triamcinolacetonide in treatment of alopecia areata. Here you can see some information about the search and selection process. After title, abstract and full text selection, we identify six eligible studies. From these six studies, uh, we included uh, four uh, in our meta-analysis. And you can see here the forest plot for the decrease in salt score, both in platelet-rich plasma and triamcinol acetonate groups, the mean decrease in salt score and the mean difference between the two groups. The effect size is 1.84, which is not a clinically relevant difference between the two groups, and we can see that there's also no statistically significant difference between the two groups. So we can say that platelet-rich plasma is an effective treatment modality in alopecia areata. It, it is as effective as the first line of treatment, triamcinolacetonide. Uh, so it can be a great steroid treatment modality in the treatment of alopecia areata. It can be used an unlimited number of treatment sessions without the increasing risk of adverse effects, unlike uh, triamcinolacetonide, and it can also be an alternative in case of steroid phobia. However, further high-quality RCTs are needed to better assess the uh, efficacy and strengthen the quality of evidence with longer follow-up periods where we can see further differences between the two treatment modalities and also uh, with different, uh, less invasive ways of administration, for example, the application of platelet-rich plasma after microneedling. And here you can see the status of our manuscript. It has been accepted in July to Biomedicine's journal. And uh, my second topic is the investigation of uh, the efficacy of platelet-rich plasma treatment in chronic wound management. Chronic wounds are common medical conditions and have a high impact on the aging population. The cost of wound management is estimated to account for 5.5% of all healthcare expenditures, and chronic wounds can also lead to a serious deterioration in patients' quality of life. The standard treatment of chronic wounds is smart dressing and compression, but the special bandages which are used are not the only thing which are making the ulcer management so expensive, but also the human resources, because the recovery time is really long. So if there's an additional treatment modality which can shorten this recovery time, it's not only good for the patient's quality of life, but can be also beneficial for the healthcare system. So platelet-rich plasma could be this additional treatment modality. As I've already mentioned, it contains concentrated growth factors and cytokines, which can not only promote hair regrowth, but also tissue repair and regeneration. So our aim was to evaluate the effects of platelet-rich plasma on wound healing in chronic wounds. The clinical question was that does platelet-rich plasma 
uh, enhances wound healing in chronic wounds compared to conventional ulcer therapy alone. In the population was patients diagnosed with chronic wounds. The intervention was platelet rich plasma treatment in addition to conventional ulcer therapy. The comparator was conventional ulcer therapy alone, and the outcome, our primary outcome, was the change of wound size. So our hypothesis was that additional treatment with platelet rich plasma is superior to conventional ulcer therapy alone. Here you can see some information about the search and, search and selection process and uh, the forest plot for complete closure. We can see that the effect size is 4.42, uh, favoring uh, the intervention, which means that the odds for complete closure were higher in the platelet-rich plasma group than in the control group, and this difference between the two groups was statistically significant. So we can say that additional treatment with platelet-rich plasma uh, enhances the wound healing. So it could be a new, safe, but tolerable add-on treatment modality in chronic wound management, uh, beneficial for the patients and also for the healthcare system. And here's the status of our, of our second manuscript. Uh, we are planning to submit uh, in September to JAMA Dermatology. Uh, and the third project is the investigation of the utility of the multi-biomarker disease activity score for the monitoring of rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic autoinflammatory disease with a prevalence of 0.5%. The intensive monitoring of the disease activity is crucial for the treat-to-target therapeutic approach, but there are mainly subjective and non-specific monitoring parameters at hand, like DAS28, CRP, and DSR. So, uh, multi-biomarker disease activity score could be a valuable tool, as it is an algorithm based on the 12, uh, uh, of the serum level of 12 biomarkers, so it's uh, totally objective. Uh, so our aim was to evaluate uh, the correlation of MBD score with conventional disease activity measures like DAS28, CRP, and DSR, and also the predictive and discriminative values of uh, MBD score for radiographic progression and uh, for the uh, discri dis discrimination of therapy responders and non-responders. So we had several uh, clinical questions with several PECOs, but I would like to present you the main one, which is that how does the MBD score correlate with conventional disease activity measures? And the population was adult patients with rheumatoid arthritis, the, and we compared MBD score with the conventional disease activity measures like DAS28, CRP, and DSR. And the outcome was the correlation of these two uh, monitoring systems. And our hypothesis is what? That MBD score uh, correlates with these conventional disease activity measures. And here's some information about the search and selection process and um, the forest plots for the correlation of MBD score with DAS28 DAS CRP and DAS28 ESR. And we can see that there were low positive and moderate positive correlations between MBD score and these conventional disease activity measures. So MBD score could be a great tool for monitoring disease activity um, and it's a benefit of it is objective, but there are further studies needed to assess if it can be used on its own or only in combination with the already existing and established uh, monitoring systems. So here's the status of our third manuscript. Uh, we have submitted in July, and now we're waiting for the revision. And here's the summary of my three projects. Uh, and I would like to thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to answer your questions if you have any. Thank you for the nice presentation. And uh, I, am, I just want to ask you how did you manage to uh, get this acceptance? So, do you have any advice for us or something motivational? <laughs> because you have three articles which are very in very good um, um, phase. So, do you have any <laughs> advice? Uh, thank you for the question. I'm not sure that I'm the best person to answer this question, but uh, I think I'm in a privileged position because I could only focus on my PhD studies this year. This was my first year of PhD and this was my main focus. So, I think that's the main reason why I could progress and also a uh, great supervisor, great SMSs, so, yeah. And um, uh, in the first topic, uh, where you submitted the paper, you haven't been rejected first. So it was the first paper where you... No, no, we submitted to German Dermatology first because they were interested in the topic uh, based on the pre-submission inquiry. Uh, but uh, they found that uh, it, it, if it was sent for review, but they found that uh, 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 the few studies were only included. So, so they said that although it's interesting, 
they couldn't publish it. So it was our, yeah, so it was our third journal, which they accepted. It's good to hear that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Congratulations, Fanny, on your presentation and your progress as well. I just wanted to know from the first topic, uh, what were the follow-up times that the SOT score was assessed and how different they were and how do you think this could have uh, an impact on your results? Thank you for your question. So uh, most of the studies assess the SOT score in several uh, follow-up times. Uh, so we try to choose uh, follow-up times uh, used in our first plot, I mean, in our analysis, uh, which are close. And we cho chose the 12-week uh, follow-up time from each study. One of them was, at, I think, at 11th week, but most of them was at 12th week. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentation. You have amazing progress. My question is that uh, platelet-rich plasma therapy is shown to be effective in this regard. Do you plan to investigate any other use of this therapy? Thank you for your question. Uh, at the moment, uh, we would like to focus on uh, finishing the second project uh, and maybe a clinical trial in one of these uh, uh, topics, so one of these diseases, so not a third, third disease at the moment. <laughs> under investigation or planning. Thank you. Actually, my, my question is uh, about your second study, is a question of a clinicians. So is there only one methodology how the investigators, the clinicians, have used the platelet-rich plasma in the uh, treatment of the wounds? Because I'm interested in the, in the uh, how, how did you apply? Thank you for your question. Uh, yes, there were several application methods. We, we made two subgroups based, two main subgroups. Uh, one of them was topical application, when they applied platelet-rich plasma in a gel format, and the other one when they injected it. So, and we also made subgrouping on that. I didn't have time to show, but uh, uh, in the injected group, there were uh, fewer studies, but we found that the number of complete closures was, uh, was higher in the injected group. So it's more effective, but uh, it's more painful as well. So it has to be evaluated by the clinician. Yeah, yeah. Which in one in is dentistry, the in the oral cavity, we, we cannot really use platelet-rich plasma, so that's why we are using platelet-rich fibrin which is an other possibility yeah. in your future trials. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your comment.